Hello and welcome to Kicking Tires. My name is Jimmy. And I'm Justin. And today is May 25th and we're sorry. It's been a few weeks since we've, uh, we've done this. Um, there was a few hiccups along the way and I had some family stuff I got to attend to. So I do apologize for that. But we are back and there's plenty of news to go over. There's so much stuff that we miss. So let's dive right into it here. Uh, the 400Z was released with all the information, all the pricing. Yeah, roughly a week ago. Oh, you have the U.S. site pulled up. Oh, um, I do. We do have Canadian pricing as well. So base price of the Z in Canada is 46498 so under 50000 which I think is a, a reasonable place for that car to be priced at. Um, you know, it's going to be more than a GR86, uh, but less than a Supra. <clears throat> but that's, that's for the base part. model, right? <laughs> As for the base model, you the one you want is going to be the performance, which is fifty eight four ninety eight. So, a pretty big price jump uh, going up from the base to the performance, but you do get a lot of stuff for that. Uh, it still undercuts the Supra by about ten thousand dollars here in Canada. So, it is a legitimate uh, competitor to the Supra, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, the reviews, you know, <clears throat> a lot. All the reviews have come out. You've probably seen them. Uh, definitely a little bit slower but it's got worse tires and it's you know it's ten thousand dollars cheaper and you know nissan's main thing <laughs> it seemed like they really wanted to drive it into the reviewers was that hey we're going after fun not numbers right um which i don't think the super is really a numbers car either but it's you know it, it just happened to put down decent numbers but uh Supra's numbers aren't as good as Nissan's numbers. Like if you just look at numbers wise, like mm -hmm. horsepower and torque wise. Actually, any oh, I mean, horsepower like wise. Performance perform metrics. Like, yeah. Like quarter mile time. I think the Supra's a little bit faster. Uh braking and stuff like that. It's it's a little bit better, but it's it's all marginal. And it's like it's a difference between like a set of tires, mm -hmm. maybe an alignment that uh I wouldn't, that's not my main concern, but yeah, with a 10 grand price difference, I think the, the Z represents a good value. I think you can, you know, squeeze performance out of it to match a Supra pretty easily. Uh, my only concern is really how the cooling is. Um, that's really going to have to play out uh, with repeated track testing and, you know, seeing how many come out to track days and how many can run the whole day. That's not an easy feat. Um, actually, at a recent track day, uh, the TSS Rev scene track day, we had like four or five Supras in the same run group. It was pretty pretty hectic. It was uh, pretty good. Uh, you know, it's good to see that people are buying this enthusiast car and running them, uh, and they're they're holding up right. Like that's that's the thing is that any car can put up solid numbers but i think uh there's a reason why the track pits are filled with a certain type of car typically porsches corvettes mustangs supras miatas s2000s that type of car right type r's um and then there's cars that are kind of sporty but don't really have the perhaps endurance or or you know, legitimate track chops to run full events and just they attract a different clientele, I think. Uh, but the Z has a lot of potential. You know, you were mentioning they have revised cooling compared to the Q60, uh, which has been so so. But Nissan hasn't been able to really sort out cooling on their Zs for over 30 years now, right? So that's that is my concern because this is the same chassis, new. Well, similar but revised chassis, and then you know it's a it's an engine that's been out for a few years. Uh, so yeah, it, it's growing on me too. I think the look, the front end, I don't think it's as pretty as the Supra, the front end. Uh, but I like the back. The I do like the back. I agree. The front. I think there's that body kit company that made something for the front that really. Like it, it looks really good. It's kind of more reminiscent of 
like the old 240s kind of look. Yeah. Um, and I really like that. Um, yeah. Here's my problem with the Z. So it starts at 46,500, and they say it's a fun car. It's not a numbers thing. Well, for $10,000, actually more than that, like $14,000 less than that, you can mm -hmm. have a much more fun car called the Subaru BRZ. Mm -hmm. Right? So like, like the way that I see it is Toyota gives you two options, right? They give you the fun car, the GR86. If you want to have fun, you cannot beat the GR86. It's, it's fun because it is light and it's attainable fun. And it's something that you can have fun every day. A Supra with the 400 horsepower that it has, or 382, same thing with the Z. It's quite a bit to have fun on, you know, everyday kind of street kind of fun. You know, you know what I mean? Like, it's not the same thing that, you know, GR86 and BRZ can get you. Yeah. But if you really want power on the other side, Mustang, 5 liter V8, it's also cheaper than the Z. Camaro, SS, Camaro 1 SS. LE, it's exact same price as the Z. So like, yeah, and those cars have more performance chops, I would say. Like, they're more yeah. proven platforms that have a lot of track miles under their belt. Yeah. Uh, and they're they're bigger cars, but I don't see them being, per like, less fun necessarily. Mm -hmm. uh, the Z is, is a smaller car. It's a shorter car. It's only a two-seater. Those are two plus twos. But it is... It is kind of a niche vehicle, and I think I don't think the the price is too big of a concern. I think if you want this, you have if you're actually serious about buying something like this, you you have the money. You have you the can, disposable yeah. income. Let's be honest. Yeah, like it's not a commuter car, fifty thousand mm -hmm. dollar, right? Yeah, yeah, it's not going to be going on gas. It's not going to be practical. It is a a toy. Yeah. Um. So yeah, we can disregard any of the the practical thinking side you want this because you want this and yeah. it's a very retro car it's got a it's got a unique look i like the interior i like what they've done with it i've like i, th I think it's speed. gonna i think it's gonna hit a lot of that like oh nostalgia I, exactly i used to have a 240 man i really love this new one mm -hmm. oh i used to have a 300 zx I miss that car a lot, and I can't buy one again these days. Yeah, I saw it, and I'm like, my first car was a 300 ZX Z31 with remember. the blue interior. It was horrible. And I'm like, I mean, great. <laughs> and I saw the blue interior. I'm like, oh dang! <laughs> I, I could relive my, my my Z dreams. Your Jay uh, Leno days. <laughs> <laughs> Let's move away from this because there's so much more to go through. Let's talk about the new Range Rover Sport. So Range Rover dropped the, the full rate size Range Rover like a few weeks back, and then they dropped the Range Rover Sport on May 10th here. Um, the Sport, of course, being the smaller, but really just as big, but yeah. sportier. More pedestrian. But, <laughs> but really kind of not that sporty. <laughs> it's it's kind of weird, but it, it's actually kind of cool. Um, it's, it's a really good looking vehicle. I got to say that. Um, like when the Velar came out, I thought that's like the new direction of Range Rover. I was like, in, absolutely in love with it. And this, it just looks like a bigger Velar. Yeah, it's it's very Velar. It's very smoothed out. We don't have kind of the more jagged edges we got with the second generation. Um, the first generation was very blocky. The second one, still very macho. This one is is completely smoothed out and. Yeah. You know, it for for a good reason. It gets a zero point two nine drag coefficient for something this big. It's very impressive. Yeah. Uh, I I think, well, Land Rover has done this thing where they they've done more. Uh, you know, the Discovery range is going to be our rugged range, and then the Range Rovers are going to be our luxury cars, and, and it's kind of it's kind of uh, made that split more concise. I think with the uh, with this latest sport, because even in the more base trims, uh, you can tell this is a sport luxury type SUV. It's not meant to, um, you know, do a Dakar Paris kind of run. Uh, 
uh, just looking at it. It does have some off-road technology in there, um, <clears throat> but you can tell the, the car is, is very low slung um, compared to the previous Range Rover Sport even. Um, but even at the tail end of the second generation Range Rover Sport, we're seeing pretty much no more plastic cladding and they've, they've kind of gone towards this direction. Now, I my gripe with this car is that it just it's so predictable like it just looks exactly like what you would think it would look like it looks like a bad thing though it's it's not necessarily but i feel i'm a little bit bored looking at this Hmm. um it looks just like the velar it looks just like the the old sport like a facelifted version of the old sport it's it's an all new car yeah, the new Range Rover as well, the full size also, uh, they, they added that kind of Fu Manchu look in the back. So that's kind of <laughs> kind of unique. But uh, the, the, the new Range full size also does not distinguish itself from the previous generation that much. Because looking back at the Range Rover we had from the 2000s, that was a very iconic look that still carried that rugged, you know, root of the Range Rover and still look very high-end, very luxurious, very classy. And the one after, the one that just got, is getting replaced, also had its own unique look. And I think this one does not distinguish itself from the previous one by much, right? Like you could say, oh, well, the the 2000s Range Rover, that's a great car to look at. We could have just made... The, the previous generation, just a facelifted version of that, essentially. But they, they changed it a lot going from one generation to the other. And then this time around, we're seeing what looks like a facelift. Yeah, the they definitely didn't pay too much attention to the, like the visuals aspect of it. But I think underneath, it's a lot more technological, like mm-hmm. advanced, um, because like, the infotainment it's completely new the interior it's very tech centric and forward like the cluster is a full screen you get this like ipad type thing on uh, in the center of your dash um the engine choices it's a 4.4 liter twin turbo v8 from a bmw um that's like the high performance motor you can still get the um uh, electric hybrid as well as well as probably not Bunch here. Of mild hybrids yeah and probably not going to be available here but there are some mild hybrid diesel engines which actually mm. is kind of cool um because mild hybrid tech i love my hybrid tech because the start stop on those are so always smooth. always smooth like starting up a new mild hybrid tech volvo it's incredible that's yeah. how smooth that is. I drove a CLS 53 recently and I'm like, mm. I couldn't even tell it was running. Like, yeah. well, which I thought, you know, on AMG felt a little bit awkward. I can't <laughs> even tell that the engine is on and I'm cruising at, you know, 60, 70 K. It might be off. Be I could... saw RPMs, but oh, okay. I couldn't hear RPMs. Cause, cause on the 53, as you're driving along, it can shut the engine off. Mm-hmm. It's it's so weird. Anyways, it's completely off topic, but like this is gonna have similar tech to that um, because I drove the Evoke before, and that had the old mild hybrid tech, and it, it was god awful. It really was. <laughs> it was just bad. Um, yeah. So with this, you know, because it does have some BMW tech, it's definitely gonna be better. There's four wheel steering now, which is gonna be super cool. Uh, for a larger vehicle like this, you know, super welcome. It's going to make maneuverability a lot better on and off road, which, yeah. you know what, let's be honest, <clears throat> I don't think anyone's get, taking this off road. You can get active differentials with torque vectoring. Uh, torque vectoring by brake, so not real, real torque vectoring, but mm. they have a whole handling package for this. this. We haven't even talked about an SV or SVA or SVR yet. Uh, this is just. The regular sport and what's available on it and yeah you can already tell a lot. <laughs> there's a lot of emphasis on the tech and there's a lot of emphasis emphasis on the handling uh because it's it's a big suv at the end of the day it's a big suv but 
I don't know if you had the same experience, but I find that the Range Rover Sport has a very large exterior presence, but inside is not that big compared well, the, to like the a GLE. old ones. The old the problem with the old ones is they were full like ladder frame mm-hmm. Range Rovers, so like the inside was like a foreigner. It just didn't have space. So like it just felt tiny yeah, on the but inside. Even the outgoing model, you could get that as a three row SUV, but it doesn't seem as spacious. Like the use of space is not great. Like yeah. the packaging. I right? feel like like you get into a Q Q seven and you're like, whoa, this thing is pretty big. Right. Yeah. That's a that's a three row SUV. That's yeah. not that big on the outside. Uh I mean, just packaging wise, it seemed better. I mean, if we're really talking about packaging, no one does packaging like Honda. Let's be honest. They're they're it could be the tiniest cars on the outside, and it could be the most well, amount of space on I the. I mean, inside. the pilot is is okay. Oh, well, that's different. The well, that's what bad. you have to compare it to. That pilot's not bad. Anyways, let's move on. Let's talk about the most expensive and the most powerful SUV from Cadillac, the Escalade yeah. V. So we talked about this a few weeks back. Um, yeah, there was, back in January. We didn't have the numbers yet. But, but now we have numbers. Pretty, um, pretty good numbers, actually. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, it's quite astonishing. It's basically 700 horsepower. Let's say, seven, let's say 700, right? Yeah. At, at 682, top gear math, that's 700 horsepower. Yeah. That's, that's, a, that's a whole lot. So... Um, I watched the video of this from the uh, the Cadillac engineers. They said it's not just the CTS, not CTS, CT5 V engine. <clears throat> it's been revised. They have different things on it to make it so that it's a bigger easier to produce torque. For one. Yeah, um, bigger supercharger, and it has more torque at the low end because it's for an SUV. Yeah, the inertia is a lot greater with a three row full size body on frame SUV than it is with a mid size sport luxury sedan right <clears throat> and only all wheel drive on the V so not like a traditional truck uh, transfer case where you have kind of four auto high low that kind of thing it's got an active uh, split so that's kind of cool um, so yeah, they they're going after kind of a. I think I think they're going after the Range Rover. If you think about it, well, it's Range got Rover the road presence. Range Rover doesn't make anything this big. They don't. Well, they they're doing the V in both the, the normal and the long. But version, even the normal one is huge. It's huge. It is. But it's it's what people cross shop realistically, right? Like yeah, Range Rover, like X Seven. Uh, GLS, they they, they kind of do cross shop, but yeah. like you're getting with any American big SUV, you're getting a good SUV. All right, I'm I'm sorry, but after driving a Jeep Grand Wagoneer, like that is a true big SUV that I would want. Like, yeah. remember how much I was raving about the Alpina XV7? <laughs> I. I still think it's a really good handling vehicle, but as a big SUV to carry six people, seven people, no, no, there, 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 there's no way. The Jeep yes. Grand Wagoneer is so much better. Same thing with the Escalade. It's just so much better of an SUV, and it can tow ten thousand pounds. Actually, I don't know how much this can tow, but I think it's at least nine. Like, there's no way it tows less than nine. Yeah, it. it I'm it's sure it's probably a lot. not. Uh, not really important for their specs on the press release, but it's going to be good. It's got air ride, so, oh, trailering, 7,000. 7,000. Aw. That's still, well, I mean, okay. better than the Tacoma. <laughs> <laughs> 7,000 is still a whole lot. I mean, yeah. for what you really need, 7,000 is quite a bit. Brian Wagoneer can go t- 10,000, but yeah, it's not as sport tuned. The regular S3 can go more than more than that but this one is all sport tuned which yeah. uh still will tow you know smaller boat car trailer so no problem it's got when i was looking car. at this you know what was kind of boggling my mind it wasn't the 4.4 second zero to 60 that yeah. my mind can comprehend but under 
a 13, a 12.7 on the quarter mile. That was boggling for me. That That is legitimate sports car. I think a Supra probably only runs around there. That yeah. might be faster than the 400Z. Um, I think so, actually. I think it is. I think the 400Z. <laughs> well, runs. I mean, this, this has those you know a little bit more power than that but <laughs> but yeah this this is this is absolutely amazing we're i'm so happy that you know cadillac has decided to make this because yeah. we're, we're at the end of this kind of era right gas guzzling uh, huge naturally aspirated no electrification SUV. Yeah. <laughs> like there's this this won't last long but get it while you can but i think it's one of those times that are like it's the only type of vehicle that you can make without any electrical competition. There are no good. There's no substitute. There are no good three row electric SUVs that can tow and have the range Mm. because they can't do it. So this is like one of those markets that electric just can't touch. So when people are make something this big that can, that's this capable. Yeah. So uh, yet it exactly. And that's why this exists. And I think it can last a little longer than your typical performance car that you may see. Mm-hmm. Anyways, let's move on. Speaking of performance car, Audi. Audi has stepped up with their new RS5 and okay. gave us a competition and competition plus package. So yeah, I mean, Okay, so Audi's doing this because people were not that uh, keen on the RS5 when it came out. So the RS5, Coupe, Sportback, and the RS4 Avant in other markets, the wagon. Uh, but the RS5 hasn't had the greatest launch, uh, especially this generation. I think the previous generation had a bigger undertaking. But this one, it's just, it's so in the shadows of the the c63 is coming out soon with that four cylinder the 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 electrified and everything um that new power plant we'll see how that goes but people are looking forward to it and the m3 is making a lot of headlines um whether you like it or not the m3 is always going to be a more legitimate sports car than than the audi there's just Mm -hmm. i i can't fathom it like i don't know why how hard it is to make uh, RS5 competitive uh, in terms of like the track stuff um, because they even compared to the outgoing M3, this this is uh, it's not up there. No, <clears throat> yeah. the the RS like it's supposed to compete with the full AMG, full fat AMGs, and the full on M cars, but in reality, they kind of have the same performance figures at the AMG light and the M sport type yeah. vehicles more than anything else. Basically. And that's, it's just kind of weird. Um, I always liked the look of them. I remember kind of they that... were discounting it. Well, so the, the, I think 21, they made it a wider body, which was really cool for the RS five. Like it's a good looking car. Um, it's a good looking car and they were discounting them like 15 K. Hmm. Like you, you wouldn't not you now. wouldn't get that off of not now. Nothing's being discounted now. <laughs> you can only make so many. But uh, there was a time when these were so undesirable that they they had to discount them. You know, yeah. five figure discounts. <laughs> uh, if you put it that way, like it's it's kind of it wasn't that long ago that these were being cleared out. The lease rates were were cheap on these too. Uh, but yeah, the, the competition package. So competition to competition plus, I guess. I don't know which is which, but basically the big thing about it is the new RS Sport Suspension Pro. So Sport Suspension Pro, that's going to be manually adjustable coilovers. Still have uh, adaptive damping, apparently three-way adjustable dampers, uh, stiffer, lower, and you can lower it a little bit more. So you can lower it. It's, it comes lowered by about 10 millimeters compared to the normal RS5, and you can lower that an extra 10 millimeters. Um, so that is the big deal with the, the RS5 is that, hey, we're, we're taking suspension, our chassis tuning more seriously now. Will this uh, still understeer like an absolute dog? Ah, uh, 
no one's tried so we, <laughs> no one we would never know because yeah uh they got better tires now p0 corsas i think the the normal rs5 gets sport contact six conti so p0 corsa is more track oriented tire uh retuned abs you can get these with carbon ceramic brakes but who does because again no one is taking this to a track uh, <laughs> um yeah no it's it's a it's a sportier package for kind of their 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 top sports model that has been a little bit disappointing yeah but they yeah i'm i'm throwing a big yawn to this and i'm moving on to the next topic because i don't yeah. care enough about this bmw <laughs> yes, this is the gold standard again yeah. <laughs> with the mid-size i guess mid-size small mid-size luxury sedan coupes whatever i don't even BMW know is the gold standard they are the segment leader in not just kind of germany but all over the world this is three series is kind it's of the, the standard the three series is the benchmark that everyone wants to hit when yeah. genesis created the g70 they weren't looking at the c class they weren't looking at the a4 they wanted to beat the three series. That's why the G70 is so sporty the way it is. Not the TLX. It, oh, no one, no one, not, <laughs> not even the, Acra, not the Q50. Not even Acro was not looking the at the IS. TLX. Uh, yeah, I no love one. the G20 three series. It came out about three years ago now. Yeah, uh, I really like this generation. I thought the interior was was pretty nice. Uh, it drove nice. It it was roomy. I liked uh, the trunk. The back seat was really reasonable for this size. Definitely usable, yeah. Uh, good powertrain options. Really, I like this generation, and they facelifted it. The yeah. facelift is it minor. Does look pretty different. Uh, I think it's, it's minor. It's like, minor because we've seen this because we've seen this on other models before, mm -hmm. which the X3 already got this facelift. That's why I was saying it's minor because yeah. to me, I'm seeing hundred percent the X3, the, front X3 end on the color, the little slash below the uh, headlight, yeah, uh, the slightly larger grill. It hasn't gone full BMW grill yet. No, uh, they got to save that for the G80 Big Daddy, right? <laughs> um, so it's got the same kind of rear end styling as the as the x3 as well you know what i noticed on the back though shaved badges i mean you still got the bmw roundel mm -hmm. but oh are they doing a badge delete on these yeah no distinction weird i saw it across all their images i don't know if it's just for press because they're like oh it's cleaner but mm -hmm. it was weird all the models model uh, distinction is gone. interesting yeah um and then the last update is really the inside um mm -hmm. They basically took the IX dash and they just slapped it on yeah, here. It's That's the really new uh, operating system eight or iDrive eight from BMW. Uh, so we got two big screens. Uh, one's like uh, about twelve inch. One's like fifteen inch. Um, and they've they've got away with a lot of the buttons uh, in the middle, right below the vent, which is what we talked about recently with the X seven. Yeah. So more minimalist design means you're going to have to go through more menus. We'll, we'll review that when it comes time, but I'm sure BMW's had really good uh, track record as far as UX goes, I think. Yeah. Just they, in my opinion. Like, they definitely did because they had the dedicated climate control. But with this new iDrive, the climate control is built into the infotainment now. So I'm sure we're going to get a lot of complaints on that. Yeah, all the reviews are going to complain about it, and it will not matter at all because... Because you set at you that temperature. It, <laughs> please just use auto climate control, which I will get to in a bit when at our after show notes because I want to talk about a car I recently picked up. But I will <laughs> save that note. Um, <laughs> all right. Yeah. Let's... But yeah, 3 Series... Um, Actually, can we go back to the three series front end <gasps> Fine. wise? Do we have a head on shot? Because it, the facelift is minor, but I think it's given it a very different vibe. That middle picture, I think it looks a lot more masculine because the grill is, is taller. It's got a more, uh, like a pit bullish, more, I don't want to say aggressive look, but it is more in your face. You just look like um, this because it looks like your dog possibly it's got kind of a snub <laughs> snub nose 
Uh, I, I'm not saying I like it necessarily, but it is, uh, it is distinct. Like it, you know, we've seen facelift. I think Audi facelifted their cars, but like none of the panels change. The headlights change a little bit. Same with Mercedes with the it, previous W205. I, I like this facelift. I really do because I like the new X3. The new X3 front end, like it's so subtle, oh, yeah. but it's Especially just, in it, the it's really nice. It just refreshes it, like it brings it back up to date. Yeah, which is the whole point, point. of the LCI <laughs> life cycle impulse, as BMW likes to call it. Um, oh, one thing I want to mention though, previously, okay, so E90 uh, and the F30 with the facelift, we had whole new engines because mm. that was BMW's thing. BMW uh, is very much an engine company, and they make some of the best engines. And yeah, with the E90, we went from 325 to 328, revised engine, a little bit more power, a little bit more reliable, a little bit better fuel economy. With the F30, we went from the N55 to the B58, uh, which is what the Supra had. Um, so the, and then also the N20 to the B48, I want to say, which from the three, oh no. Yeah, 328 to the 330i. We had a whole new uh, or thoroughly revised engines. But with this LCI, we do not have a real big update as far as powertrain. I did see they're adding mild hybrid to the 340i, mm -hmm. uh, which is cool. But that's pretty minor uh, compared to previous 3 Series uh, LCI updates. updates. Yeah, so... I wanted to point that out because we're not getting like something super exciting as far as engines go. Um, which I'm going to be I honest, it's because they're 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 focusing on electric, right? Yeah, it the when I had the X3, it was an X3 40, so it was an M40i, so same thing as this 340i. That powertrain is absolutely phenomenal. Oh yeah, it sounds good. Good on gas. Lots of power, and there's a reason why uh, people look up to these engines. Yeah, it's it's a phenomenal engine. The mount hybrid worked quite well. Like cars that I get in, I want to turn off the auto shut off at the mm. light mode. Like I forgot what that thing is called. Auto start stop. Or yeah, <laughs> of course, auto start stop. So dumb. Anyways, I. There, there are certain cars that I will always turn that off. Uh, but with any mild hybrid tech car, it's just like, I, I don't need to touch that button. Mm -hmm. What's funny is the RDX I have right now, there's a very big button in the center of the dash for that engine start stop because you want to press it because oh. it's that disruptive. It's that rough. Yeah. Is that like, the four cylinder too? Yeah, it's the K series. Oh, I guess so. That would make sense. Yeah. Uh, and they, you know what? A lot of manufacturers, they don't save that setting too, which is mm, kind of... Yeah, like, when you start the car, yeah. it resets, yeah. BMW, you can buy Bimmer code or all sorts of coding apps and then just buy a Bluetooth thing off of Amazon and code that out. Mm. Uh, and you, well, not code it out, but you can save your previous setting. So if you, oh, okay. if you turned off auto start stop, it will always be off until you turn it back on again. Oh, that's kind of uh, nice, actually. Which is Handy. great. I, I honestly love bmw ownership it is the best yeah and by bmw ownership you mean toyota, Supra, toyota. <laughs> <laughs> i just love inline six. like inline six is is the best and they make the best inline sixes so fight me <laughs> well nissan owners right now are just like crying the rb26 well, they haven't toyota. made a great inline six in a very long time Toyota owners are like, oh, but the one J, the 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 suit, the Toyota. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Anyways, sluggish sluggish engine. Let's uh, move on yeah. to something more exciting here. This is the BMW M3 50 Javer. I'm, 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 I'm definitely it took two terms of German. So. It's. <laughs> Funzigata, which is the 50 year anniversary. Of Why did BMW you take two M years of German? Two terms, two terms. Not oh, I <laughs> I needed breath. They they call it breath courses. Like you have to take like a mix. So you can't just take one type of course. 
Uh, so you decided SFU, German? So. Uh, yeah. I, I didn't <laughs> want to do anything else. So, yeah. so weird. Anyways, <laughs> 50 it's, years. It's the most useless language because everyone in Germany speaks English and like better than people here <laughs> like they're so fluent in everything the well then yeah. you can say what james may says i don't know if you remember that episode of no. top gear naturally your head is wet you're standing under a waterfall he said that in german that's the only german that he knows i can't remember <laughs> what it was what? anyway <laughs> it's my my top gear knowledge is tip top anyways 50 years of m that's basically what this is. Limited to 500 vehicles, exclusive to North American buyers. You get this amazing suitcase. Just check out check out the wheels on that suitcase. That's that's what you want right there. Um, I can't but, tell what wheels they are. <laughs> they're nothing special, that's for sure. Oh, man. I thought they were like the garbage can T37. <laughs> <laughs> You would think that they would do something special, but yeah. no, it's just this is a regular suitcase. Anyways, but what you have to know is there's special edition paint colors to represent five generations of M3. And you know what? They're all absolutely beautiful. Oh yeah. Um, you know you which buy- one my favorite is the one in my background here. Well, you have uh, two colors on your background, oh, so it's, it's kind of hard to see. It's the one up front. It All right, the techno violet, techno violet E36, E36. M3. So, yeah, I mean, <laughs> the heritage colors, uh, if we were to list it out from E30, we have five generations to cover. E30, we've got the non metallic cinnabar red. Uh, I guess there's no picture of that. No, the they only have pictures. It's stupid, they only have two colors on their pictures. Oh man, but. So- if, if, you, if you know BMWs, the picture that you currently see in your head of the E30 M3 in red, that's the one. It's it's just fire red. Like it's it is the classic red that yeah. you get on any car. Like a Nissan Versa is available in this classic <laughs> fire red. Like frankly speaking, right? Slightly uh, less faded, but yeah. Uh, Cinnabar red, so non-metallic. That's really standard, but I guess. You can't get a normal G80 M3 in that color anyways. Um, there is also the E36 Techno Violet. That's the purple color. Uh, even better than what's that What's that violet color that they have? The purple? Night the purple? Purple? Whatever, whatever is available on the M240i, but the oh, Techno Violet is better. Oh, uh, I can't remember what it is. I know what you're talking about. Yeah. That one's not as nice as this. It's not as nice as Techno Violet. Techno Violet, if I could special order a G80 even after, because this this 50 year anniversary is just for this year and it's just for North America. So I probably won't be able to get one. Um, but if I could special order an individual in the future, I would probably get this color. I love the G80 M3. Uh, I love it because our mutual friend Jordan hates it. <laughs> Uh, speaking of our mutual friend Jordan, so the next color is the E46, which is kind of a dark blue color, not actually what Jordan has, but uh, E46, it's got the Interlagos, Interlagos blue. Um, it's just a dark blue color, really clean. It's it's the safest color. Uh, picture any yeah, E46 M3, also the Z4Ms, a lot of them came in this color. Uh, and then after that, we have the E90s. So E90, the E91 was an interesting choice because it was such a rare color. So they picked to their homage to the E92 M3 was Lime Rock Edition's Fire Orange 3 color, which is, it's it's orange. Like it is the brightest orange, uh, most in your face orange you could think of. Wasn't uh, that just the you know like the that was the special you could edition only get it with. as a coupe and you can only get it as a lime rock edition which i'm like okay that is not like the signature color of that generation um because Did you it, could only get it as a coupe you couldn't even get it as a, wasn't the gts also that orange is that why fire orange street uh well according to press release it's really the, the lime rock which i i i've seen that car before a few times there's there's at oh. least two or three in town uh, in Fire Orange 3. But it's, I don't like that color. To me, that color looks like a cheap wrap. Like, it's a very typical color that people would wrap it their is, cars in. 
I'm just uh, doing a quick Google search. The fire orange is the E92 GTS orange. Mm. That's why. Yeah. I don't know what fire orange one and two look like, but fire orange is, I don't know how it will look with this giant grill. It is very in your face. Uh, yeah. So fire orange, that is the E90 color. And then with the G, G, oh no, the F80, F80 series, we have the lime rock gray, which is that kind of think similar to Nardo gray and all these other fashion gray Brooklyn gray like it's these kind of pastel looking gray colors very trendy at the moment uh but lime rock gray that that's a good one I think yeah the only one that I'm iffy about is fire orange three uh really like the orange on the m3 on that e92 before I think it just got ruined in my mind because of all the cheap wraps mm. but, yeah because it's it's a very like I don't know 3m color the there are two options that you can get with this car uh carbon seats and special set of wheels um the forged wheels they are optional um and the carbon backed seats so those are the only two paid extras that you can get on this car and gosh those seats look great yeah carbon everything these seats and they have the tickle pockets so if you have people in the back seat they will uh, tickle you I don't know. If if I were sitting in the back seat, I would definitely engage remind in me, some tickets. Remind me never to get a press car with uh with holes with in the, the competition seat. seats. Yeah. <laughs> I, I love those seats. Um they I, I sat in them. The this one has that little middle ridge cup between your thighs. It is kind of awkward because it is very like protruding. <laughs> the, the little <laughs> oh right here the nutsack holder <laughs> <laughs> definitely yeah. doesn't look too comfortable but yeah but once you're in it is very buckety like you, you your your thighs are very separated because of that piece which you don't <laughs> get on most other bucket seats um, well i mean yeah. this is this is really cool and all cool thing is the logo did we talk about the logo we didn't talk. Let's zoom in on the logo oh, a bit. Well, we're talking about the logo of the next car because that's part of the heritage of the next car as well. Nice. So, yeah, it's not the normal BMW blue and white logo. It is, but it's shrunken down. It's the Motorsport logo, which yeah. has a few more. It has the M colors around it. Uh, M colors all over this car. This was used in the, uh, the first CSL that was created because we're going to go right into it. M4 CSL. So the so CSL is competition sports lightweight. Um, essentially, this is the third time BMW has used a CSL in any of their vehicles. Um, the first was, oh gosh, E something. I can't remember what the number was. 24? Something like that. It looked wicked. It looked like a Oh, Bat the Batwing car. Yeah, yeah, The yeah. Batwing, yeah, yeah. That's like a 6 Series, right? Yeah. Uh, I can't remember exactly. 35 CSL. Yeah, I can't remember exactly what generation code that was. Yeah. Uh, but the CSI. CSL... But the, the CLL that I remember was the E46. Because, well, old enough to remember that when that came out. Um, but it was so cool. You know, no backseat, carbon roof, ducktail spoilers. And that's basically what they kind of done to this brand new M4 CSL yeah. here. It's a modern interpretation. It's the hardcore version. It's their kind of, you know, think Porsche GT car or an RS Porsche. Um, so it has a similar engine, but they've upped the boost. They've, they've done some software tuning on it. Uh, so it's making a little bit more power than before. 40 more uh, horsepower than the M4 car. Yeah, a solid amount. Uh, whether or not most people will notice it, I don't know. Uh, oh, the M4, yeah, it's it's a cool car. The big thing is really how much weight they've saved because I didn't think you could save that much weight out of a, out of what already is like made of a lot of lightweight materials. Yeah. But 240 pounds is is no slouch in a modern car. So 200. So I was reading this is 240 pounds lighter than the M4 Comp but still 100 pounds more than the last year M4 GTS. 
Ah, the, the last the generation, cage. the F eighty. Yeah. The one so with even the with the cage, it was it's still a hundred pounds lighter than this because it's a smaller car. Hmm. But this one is faster because it has more power. Yeah, and it, it's really <laughs> cool because of how how they've saved the weight. Because okay, the obvious stuff. Okay, they've they've changed it to carbon bucket seats. That saved like fifty pounds. Uh, they've took out the rear seat, replaced it with two pieces of board to partition off the trunk. That saves another forty-five pounds. They've uh, changed the wheels, carbon ceramic brakes, a little bit lighter shocks and spring setup. That's another forty-five pounds. So there already you have one hundred and forty pounds of weight savings. But the cool stuff really comes in. 15 kilos less sound insulation. That's 30 some, some odd pounds of sound insulation. I didn't know there was that much in there. Uh, so curious where it's shaved off and how different it sounds. Um, uh, 11 kilograms worth of switching over to carbon fiber reinforced plastic. So uh, our polymers, I guess they call it. Uh, so we have CF hood, CF trunk, Center console, similar to other CSs in the past, where you have no armrests, you don't have a storage bin uh, <laughs> under your elbow, but all that to save weight. Uh, there's another 25 pounds. Well, I don't think it's the center console. And I just talked to a friend of mine who owns the GTS, and he's like, you know, I could really use a center console, uh, like like a center <laughs> cubby. <laughs> he's like i could spare those two pounds yeah. on, on the it's plastic like, door I, I i you know i could just skip breakfast and then yeah it would be skip. nice to have the storage and it's it's in the middle and it's low down in the car that it doesn't really matter the two pounds but it's part of this whole treatment right so titanium exhaust and the cooler bits is even look at the grill it's it's hollowed out for the most part yeah, uh, compared to the normal grill, and there's a lot of weight savings in that too, because it's a giant grill. Um, the tail lights, even the floor mats and the climate control, they've shedded weight there. Uh, again, yeah. it's not very significant. It's only about nine pounds worth of weight in the grill, tail lights, floor mats, climate control combined, but it still counts for something. And I, yeah, <laughs> they when they do, I was going through the video of the engineering team going over how they shed the white for the climate control i can't remember if they went from like a dual zone to a single zone or automated climate control to not automated but it they still did said this, automated it's still automated okay yeah, it was so just a little zone. bit single zone to reduce the weight and i'm like that's crazy because like from dual zone to that all they're really doing is they're, they're not changing the switch gear they're just removing a sensor on the passenger side and changing the, the <laughs> whatever is not necessary right they're taking it out uh which... i'm gonna and then i'm gonna say the tail light so this tail light they say it they shaved like the tiniest <laughs> amount of weight <laughs> look at how thin the uh the, the little the LED little strip, light... laser strips are <sighs> so they didn't have to do this let's be honest <laughs> Right, but it's cool. The effort it's is so cool. cool. It's so <laughs> cool. I, I gotta admit, because the last, not the comp, but the they did the um OLED yes. panel for the oh, tail the GTS, yeah, GTS tail lights. They look Those are so super cool. expensive. They're Those so look cool. better than this, but they're probably not as light as this. <laughs> yep. Which <laughs> it's it's how much is a tail light a plastic tail light realistically weigh probably like four pounds but yeah still but, but you know if you could just make the light strip a little bit yeah. thinner still with the dot but a little bit thinner yeah because it's cool it's just like part of a design aesthetic that like it's it's more minimalist which yeah. I dig um, but they went with a heavy aluminum strut brace in the front. Not carbon fiber like the previous generation. No boomerang like the old one. Yeah. Yeah. They could have saved 242 pounds if they went with yeah. carbon fiber. Could have had, they... yeah, probably a few extra grams off of that brace. <laughs> the engine bay is not as pretty as the old one for sure because no. of that carbon brace and just uh, the engine cover. It that that brace is not is not pretty by any means. No. They, I remember they shaved weight in the wheels as well. The wheels looked the same. But they're not. These are actually lighter. I don't know uh, if you said probably that. Oh, yeah, lighter out. wheels. Yeah. Yeah. Slightly. It's yeah, carbon ceramics. But, you know, it's a super cool. It's cool because it's like no one's really done this in a while. Like 
that was kind of what made the GT3 really cool back in the day. The 996 GT3, I remember just changing the badge, right? The badge doesn't weigh anything, oh. but changing it to a sticker. <laughs> to, a sticker. <laughs> to a sticker. Like, it's just, it's stuff like that that, you know what? It probably costs them a lot less to make it, but they, it probably saves the, the, the manufacturer money, but it's still cool to for it to come from a manufacturer. Now, if you do it yourself, it's happy. <laughs> Right, like I was, I was gonna say, like, have you been printing out Toyota badges again, just yeah. sticking on your car? If you do it yourself, it's it's tacky, but because <laughs> they did it first, it's cool. Then it's cool. Um, makes sense. Makes sense. Yeah. Let's move on. Um, Honda CRV. We don't have any details. Information is coming in the future. Mm-hmm. They drop some images. It looks like the new Civic. We know that. Like hybrid. The, it is a hybrid. They, they have a badge on the back that says it's a hybrid. The taillights look so cool. I love that because it looks like a Volvo. <laughs> it looks like to a me. BMW. <laughs> it looks like a BMW too. It reminds me of the Volvo because it, it comes up G- from the top. G twenty slash. Oh, then it has a. Yeah, it's a combination of both. Yeah. CRVs they, always look like a Volvo. They, they Remember did. the old ones? <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. Well, my generation has the full taillight too. Yeah. But they they cheaped out here. You can see incandescent turn signal. Hmm. They cheaped out. Anyways, we don't know much details, but new CRVs on the horizon. The hybrid is a big deal because if they didn't do a hybrid here in North America, like just well, pack, they have the hybrid in leave. the US, but they just don't bring it to Canada because reasons. I was yeah. never they being just able couldn't make enough of them. Or or oh. they just knew they couldn't make one as good as Toyota. No, they well, it's not as good as Toyota. It's not as efficient. They're not selling as many as they thought they would. And it's just never mm-hmm. came to Canada. Fair but enough. speaking of Toyota, Foreigner Anniversary Edition. Mm-hmm. 40th anniversary of the exact same vehicle is available for you now on the vehicle colors that they used to have. It's black with a stripe on it or some other colors. Yeah. Let's be honest. There's not a lot of information here. It's got but, like an A-team stripe. <laughs> like that side. But what you have to know is in the U.S., there's 4,040 of them available. In Canada, there's only 400. Um, so if you want a special edition. Some foreigner, guy in the product planning is like, okay, it has to be it has to be four and zero. It has to be another. <laughs> but so, we're not going to make 4,000. You know, we got to, we got to. We can't do 404 because that's like an error. Yeah. Uh, so I guess we'll do 400. Four. And like, yeah. You know, you know what happened here is um, the foreigner was supposed to be updated for 2023. That was actually the part of the product planning. But they're like, mm, man, people still really want to line up for buying these. Why, why don't we just delay that another year? We'll, we'll come up with this special anniversary edition, get people to buy it. And of course, you know, foreigner lovers. We'll still absolutely latch on to this and then probably, you know, sell this on BAT in 10 years time for like $50,000 over what they paid. I wonder if they would, because it's just not that special. It's just, it's literally just a graphic. Yeah. Well, it, yeah. Like you could you recreate s- this with like $50 of plastic dip and vinyl. But when it comes to anything that's special edition, you know that it's always comes up later on as something super cool, super amazing, and super expensive. What are the other colors available? Because they, they um, showcase a black. It's black. Uh, white, midnight, black, and Barcelona red. So all, I guess. Kind of heritage the, colors. I guess so, yeah. yeah. The only one I care about is uh, Army Green. Well, that's the thing. This isn't based off of TRD Pro, mm-hmm. which to me was kind of weird. Because it generally it looks like a trail. For, yeah, it's it's not. It's just like a base with some added on bits and pieces. Is it maybe? even capable at all? Don't say that. Foreigner people get mad. Speaking of capable, just as capable as this all-wheel drive minivan. <laughs> a lot of anniversary <laughs> editions lately. Toyota Toyota has twenty five anniversary for the Sienna. <laughs> So see, it's not quite like the M3 anniversary where we can look back at all the great M3s and uh, the beautiful colors that came. No, look, the... <laughs> in, in the press release, they talk about the first generation 
from 1998 to 2003, designed expressively for the North American market. The 1998 Sienna was built at Toyota Motoring Factory in Kentucky. Yeah. Like they go through the all one of that was significantly worse than a previous. <laughs> it's the first generation Sienna. It really wasn't that like, great. That first one. Yeah, the Sienna, the previa was amazing. The Sienna was, it's it's okay. I well, get why. Let me did. tell you about this brand new one and why you need to buy it. All right. So it's based off the XSE. So you get the amazing looking front grille, which I can't find a picture for. Well, maybe it's in here. Wait, wait, grill. Yeah. There. Yeah. Top right. You get the amazing extra large grill. Um, I, I saw that you held back your uh, barf a little bit there, um, but it's the, <laughs> the XSE grill on the front, right? You get the X, XSE look on the back. You got the XSE badge. Mm -hmm. uh, you can get it in front wheel drive or all wheel drive thanks to that hybrid powertrain. You get these 25 year floor mats. These will go on uh, eBay after for a lot of money. Uh, and that's really it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know what they. Uh, okay, so so let, okay. To be honest, what they have done is they took the XSE, but they added some limited parts to it, like heated and cooled front seats. Mm. So you get that. I don't know if you get the 360 camera. Let's see if I do a. Yes, you do. So you get 360 camera and the heated and cooled front seats which were the two things that I really wanted in the XSE, but you couldn't do it. Nice. So I talked to people at like Van Culture, which is a modifying group. A lot of people want the limited, so they buy the limited, but they get the XSE front and rear bumpers because they look better and sportier. Mm -hmm. But that's kind of what they're giving you here. But if you want uh, a bit of buyer advice, if you can go after this anniversary edition, Chances are there's not a lot of people in line for this. Um, you know, Toyota for the anniversary edition. Well, I, I mean, I don't know how many there are. I called to the to the uh, the Toyota that's nearby here. I asked them like, oh, I saw that there was a special anniversary edition. Um, it's like, are you guys taking pre-orders for that? It's like, oh, no, we're not taking any pre-orders for any more vehicles upcoming. Um, there was yeah. Uh, there they was can't a really, fulfill any orders. They yes. did, it was mainly because after the GR Corolla, something happened, and then now they're not taking any pre-orders. Yeah, because what happened is people are going to every dealership and putting a deposit down, $500, $1,000, whatever. It was all across town, wasting a bunch of people's time. Uh, and it's just, I don't know. It's it's rough right now. Um my only advice is if you want to Sienna, try somewhere not in the lower mainland. Like go to a more remote dealer is where my customers have been getting their Siennas. Hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And driving it back like halfway across the province. Well, speaking yeah. of prices, I just want to go on a quick tangent before you go on yours. I was looking on Craigslist as I do. Actually, it's been a few months since I've been on Craigslist. Uh, because with pricing of used cars being the way they are, I was like, there's really no point. I can't find any good deals. I was just looking at some EVs just to see kind of what they are. The cheapest one I found was $15,000 for a 2015 Leaf. Leaf? Yeah, that was the cheapest EV I found. And then the atrocity stuff is like, you know, $80,000 Teslas, that's supposed to be sixty. I saw an Ionic 5 that's supposed to be 45 grand for $70,000 listed. It's crazy. I don't know if I, anyone buys it. Well, I, I had a friend that uh, had a Golf R, uh, Mark 8, and he sold it back to the dealer. Dealer paid him about two grand more than what he paid for it brand new. Hmm. And they sold that car for like almost 70K the next day. So it's it's actually insane. Like, what people are willing to pay. I don't know if these people are buying on credit or like, they're just like, I, I can afford this monthly payment for this car. And that is good. Um, but yeah, it's, it's scary because like people are actually buying like very inflated prices for yeah. used cars. Um, 
you know, we knew that with cars like, you know, cars that were actually hard to get, but now everything is like, like a, a Golf R was not hard to get a year ago. Well, now it's impossible to get. Yeah. Basically. But like my, the dealer that I bought my CRV from offered to buy it back for more money than I paid for it two years ago, three, yeah. almost three years that ago. That seems like that is the rhetoric that's going around, right? Everyone is like, well, I can get, you know, more for my car than what I paid for. But the problem is you can't replace your car either because oh. everything else is up. Luckily, I'm in a scenario where I don't really have to think about that, so I was heavily yeah. considering it. <laughs> you have, you do have a wrap that you could use. I was, I was heavily considering it, but I still want something here just in case. Just take the wrap six. <sighs> Maybe I feel like it's it's terrible on gas, but it is. Uh, but yeah, uh, last. I yes. mean, speaking of car purchases, anyways, you go on your tangent because <laughs> so, we're out almost out of we've time. Been, we've been uh, away for what three, four weeks now. Uh, so, since that time, uh, well, I did, I think I did talk about I sold the M2 uh, yes. because I got lowballed for it for a trade in. So, I just sold it privately. Well, not private, sold it to a dealer actually. Uh, and the replacement for them to is a 718 GT4, which is like it's a cop out car because I think it's very, uh, it's such a predictable car, and it's like it's a car that is kind of a no brainer. If they will sell you one, just take it because uh, you will not lose money on it. And that's kind of the rhetoric is that everyone talks about how much it's worth, how the resale value bliss, depreciation this. And I don't know. I've had it for two weeks now. Um, haven't had a chance to talk about it on this show, but basically, oh, there you go. Racing yellow GT4, PDK, carbon ceramic brakes, bucket seats. Sounds like all the um, wrong options there. Well, I realize that there are options that I missed. <laughs> I The first day hopping into it driving back to the shop i was like why does the ac suck ass <laughs> really <laughs> it doesn't have it doesn't have auto climate control the dual zone i could care less about but i wanted auto climate control at least wait does it, it doesn't have, auto have climate control it's manual ac it's a temperature like up down thing uh it's it's so oh. basic like you can't that was one of the things that annoyed me you have no comfort features on this car <laughs> Like I don't have lane departure warning. I don't have forward collision well, warning. That that have, I'm that I'm, I'm I, that's normal. I think yeah. that's normal. You don't have rain sensing wipers, which kind of sucks. Like I got so used to it. Ra most rain sensing wipers don't work the way that you want it to, though. I don't know. I've had good experience with the BMW yeah. and the Toyota one. Mm, the okay, RAV4. BMW ones generally work pretty well. Yeah, the, the, the RAV4 them... one is decent too. Uh, the auto wipers on that uh the what else is it missing you can't even option for keyless go like the porsche entry and drive you can't even option for that wait you have to uh, press a key you have to stick a key in on the left side and turn it every time you cannot no. you can't pull the door handle it will not open and that's a gt car thing because uh, what, no they can give you less for more money is there is there is a car-shaped fob, but you have to stick it in the hole. You still... Oh, no, to start it. And, and multiple times, I have left it in the keyhole after getting out because I've turned it off <laughs> and just hopped out because I've driven other Porsches in the past, like Macans or Cayennes or whatever, and I've just... You just turn the thing to the left, turn it off, and then walk away. But no, you have to pull the key out. Otherwise, someone can just hop in and steal it because you can't even option for that. Um... The price has gone up a little bit, but when I ordered, it was cheaper than what you can spec it for now. Uh, it's pretty get, base. Did you I got, get the 3D printed body forming full bucket seat? <laughs> no. Uh, the seats are pretty slick. Seats are pretty slick. I have to buy, I bought, I've already spent a lot of money in the aftermarket because I had to buy brackets to fix the seating position. So the seating position is the seats are comfortable enough, but the problem is they don't recline, uh, which is okay on, as a daily driver. But 
If you ever wear a helmet, you're slouched forward and it doesn't work, which is a huge oh. oversight on their part because it you sit very upright normally daily driving, which is fine, but you add three inches of helmet behind you and you're no longer in a good position. Uh, so basically the seat brackets raise the front of the seat so it's more reclined. What they're trying to say is it's so safe, you don't need a helmet. Uh, See? See? Big brain stuff right there. Yeah. Um, and you don't want to put all that weight on the top of the car. You're ruining the GT-ness of the vehicle. Yeah. <laughs> but at the end of the day, this car costed more than double of the Supra, which to me, that is the, the kicker because a lot of people ask me, okay, how do you like this car? And I'm like, you know, the Supra is, is a better car. I, I feel like the people buy this car because they know it won't depreciate. They know it will appreciate. And that is the big appeal of a GT4. It sounds like meh. It sounds really meh because the 718 uh, below 3000 RPM just sounds like a vacuum cleaner. Uh, because they added a particulate filter in it. It sounds worse than the old GD4. Uh, if you get a manual, the gearing is meh. Uh, the, everything is great, though. Like, don't get me wrong. The steering is amazing. The power delivery, NA engine, flat six is amazing. The PDK gearbox is amazing. Uh, everything, like, driving-wise is amazing, but it's a b- little bit too good because you just can't have fun in this car at normal, not even normal speed. You can't even have fun at this car at triple the speed limit, right? You have to be on a track, which that to me is what bothers me about this car is the Supra is more fun on the street. It's not as capable on the track, but not only is it more fun on the street, it's more livable because it has front sensors, back sensors, uh, forward braking, lane departure, forward uh, radar cruise control, uh what is that blind spot sensors it has it doesn't have blind spot monitoring it doesn't have blind spot i didn't even know that was legal yeah i thought that was a car with no blind sensors it has a rear camera though oh and it doesn't even have auto dimming mirrors which is so lame because you the car is low enough that suvs do blind Mm. you and you have when you drive at night you have to flick the thing like like you're living in the 90s like it's so loud like it's it's lame like how how they've gotten away with building a car like this i (laughs) honestly don't know but again it all boils down the desirability all boils down to the exclusivity and the the secondhand values of these cars because i had another customer pick up same color without the carbon ceramic brakes he paid more than i did brand new and he had to snipe that deal uh it came up less than 24 hours and he had to snipe that deal. And it was more than MSRP for a two year old car. Um, that, that, that is just mind boggling. Um, I did get a side graphic. To oh, put on you, it. you got the 69 no. on the side of the vehicle. <laughs> I should have, uh, <laughs> no, I just bought some aftermarket decals. $1,349 to say 69 on the side of 69, your car. Four, you need 420 on one side and then 69 on the No, other. sorry. It has to be the same on both sides. Yeah, but no. not. <laughs> don't get me wrong. This car is... It, it is... It's, okay, I'm just... It's it's like literally the world's biggest first world problems. Like, oh man, you know what? I just got myself a Porsche and like just driving it every day is so hard. I have to like... Yeah. It's not as easy as my Supra. <laughs> That's what you sound like. But it is what I sound like. And it is the truth. And it is, I don't know. For me, you could buy two Supras for this. And okay. I don't think it's two Supras worth of car. Here's my question Does a regular 718, can you get those things? You can get Keyless Go on a 718, a regular one. The, get- the car to buy, if you don't, okay, if you don't care about resale value, you don't care about the car appreciating in 10 years or whatever, being able to track it for free, essentially, blah, blah, blah. Get the GTS 4.0 because it's the exact same power plant, but you can get a lot of the comfort features. And it's like 20, 30K less for a same similarly equipped car. The GTS 4.0 doesn't have the, the crazy arrow. It's a little bit more livable. 
but it's a better value and it's uh it's it's gt4 light because the old the old gts wasn't really comparable to gt4 but now they've given it the same options uh drivetrain wise it doesn't look as cool for sure like that front bumper does not look as good but it's more mm-hmm. livable it's more it's more you know daily drivable the the gt4 front lip is so long um the overhang is insane i don't Didn't even know how it? i'm gonna get on the fair i raised it all the way up but all the way up is only eight millimeters oh it, it couldn't even i don't think it, i even got a centimeter out of it uh <laughs> raising the manual coilovers all the way up so there's that like you don't need carbon ceramic brakes necessarily but when you go to cars and coffee people look at your brakes and they're just like oh this oh, guy didn't get red. the they, they didn't get the yellow. carbon package oh yeah you gotta there, get that. The, yeah, because people talk about the options that add value. So the bucket seats add value, carbon ceramics add value. Oh, lane change assist, adaptive. You can't. Control. I don't think you can even add that in the uh, in the GD4. Porsche entry, entry and, and drive. drive. See, it's nine hundred bucks. It's such a ripoff because it's it's standard on a twenty thousand dollar Hyundai. It's such a ripoff, but <laughs> I do want it still, even Sorry. if it's nine hundred dollars. This is. Preparation for a dash cam is $150. Not the dash cam. Doesn't even include the dash cam. (laughs) They didn't even try to sell me that though. They think they knew. Yeah. Oh, I like this a lot. 125k so far. 21,000 additional options. (laughs) Yeah. It's better equipped and still 20k less than a GT4. But this doesn't look as cool. It doesn't look as cool, but it is the car to get if if you just care about how a car drives and how a car is to live with that is the car and that what else is a car really aside from that right but no if you how much is the base 911 you can't get a 9 well you can't get a gd4 either either way all these cars you have to wait like over a year for a base 911 is 119 okay taking msrp I I would personally take this over that. It's not as good of an engine. Oh, definitely the, not. But the GTS 4.0 gets 4.0. But everyone knows when you're buying a Porsche, you're buying a 911. If you buy anything else, you're just throwing it away. <laughs> Basically, because what do you drive? Oh, I see. I have a Porsche, but it's not the one that you're thinking of with the engine in the back. This one is better because they put the engine in the middle, but they can't make it that much better because the one that has the engine in the back has to be the best. Yeah. Every single time you talk to a person, you have to explain that. That gets you know exhausting. But <laughs> you buy a 911 Carrera, you don't have to explain that. They'll be like, oh, do you have the one with the turbo? And you can say yes. They all have the turbo. No, don't say that. The that, that you, if you say that, of course that, I have a turbo. Exactly. You just say that. It's like, of course I got the turbo. And you can put a turbo badge on the back of this and not be a liar. <laughs> Here's your kicking tires top tip. If you want a Porsche, buy the 911. If Carrera. you can get a 992, <laughs> get a 992. Uh, put, put a fake black yeah. vinyl in front of the rear fender. It'll look like it has a vent. Um, go to eBay, buy a wing on the rear, and then a turbo decal. Yeah. Right but, now, even 992s, you have to trade in to get one. That is. Just, oh, really? You can't even crazy, just... crazy world we live in that you, you have to trade in to even be considered to buy one. It is. Uh, it is I saw rough. one of our mutual friends got a 997, and I got really jealous. Yeah, that 997 is not cheap. Oh, I know. Not cheap at all. It's direct from Porsche. Like, I know it wouldn't be cheap. I saw it. It was over 90K <laughs> for, for a 10 997. Year old, 10-year-old 997. Oh, so that, those are the times we live in. Because, well, here's the thing, right? People always ask me, well, how do you, how do you get one? And it's the same as the GR Corolla. I already explained it in the past. It's, you've got to be willing to take a huge hit on whatever you're trading in. They will give you an allocation. Someone somewhere will take your order. And give you a car if you're willing to lose money on, like give them more money to make. That's, like that is the game right now. There's, good. Time. That's the crazy thing is we knew this with cars like Ferrari in the past, yeah, but but now it's for it's every now car. trickled down to Rav4s and Sienna. It's like, 
All and right. Teslas. I'm yeah. I'm gonna be uh, right after this call. I'm gonna be on my way to a a local guy that has a nine nine six for sale. Nine nine six is fifty thousand dollars. Turbo? No. C two. Oh no. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> With one hundred and thirty thousand yeah. on it. Oh, uh, before I forget, I also want to mention we are hosting our track day, July 25th at Mission Raceway. We will have our Red Seal service advisor, barbecue chef, uh, flipping burgers, and I'm not sure what else. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the novices are welcome. We do have instructors. In novice group is filled up at the moment i think we will just open up a second novice group because it seems like a lot of first timers want to come out uh so we're welcoming of that so and test drives on the gt4 right definitely test ride i heard test drive on gt4 and bring home a supra something like that you can ride in anything <laughs> if you come to our track day 275 packs in monday july 25th that's actually very reasonable, 275 tax in. Yeah, we're that's, not making money on that. That's, well, clearly. <laughs> you, won't, you won't even cover food. At 275, actually, no, you wouldn't be. But yeah. that's very reasonable. Maybe yeah. uh, maybe I'll come and just drive the RAV4 round. No. RAV6? RAV6. RAV6 versus CRV battle. <laughs> Heavy tires with power versus lighter wheels Lower and tires. and with... handling. <laughs> upgrade. The, the RAV6 handles terribly. I can tell you that. I have I have stiffer sways for the CRV. I have a quartz sway bars on it. <laughs> Our so, quartz sway bars actually stiffer. Yeah. <laughs> the CRV one's really thin. Anyways, that's really it for this week. Thank you so much for watching. It's been one hell of a week, or like three weeks that we haven't been on air. We'll be back next week, though, back on a regular time. So thank you so much, and we'll catch you later. <laughs>